In his last letter to the mathematician G. H. Hardy, the Indian mathematician Ramanujan shared his latest insights. The letter described several new functions that behave differently from known theta functions or modular forms and yet closely mimic them. No one at that time understood what Ramanujan was talking about. It wasn't until 2002, through the work of Sander Z. Wegers, that we had a description of the functions that Ramanujan was writing about in the year 1920 and said, a Mori mathematician can honor. It took the scientific community 80 years to comprehend Ramanujan's work. Most of the mathematicians who worked with Ramanujan 100 years back and those research on Ramanujan's equations now have credited Ramanujan's intuition for coming up with what was an impossible thing for others. But Ramanujan credited his success to Hindu goddess who came in his dreams. Hello everyone. Welcome to Resonant News. Today we bring to you the story of the famous mathematician Ramanujan and his close association with Hinduism, which those around him believe made him the genius he was. G. H. Hardy, a famous mathematician who had worked closely with Ramanujan, said that there was something peculiar about Ramanujan. Here was a man who could work out modular equations and theorems in order to unheard of whose mastery of continued fractions was beyond that of any mathematician in the world, who had found himself the functional equation of zeta functions and the dominant term of many of most famous problems in the analytic theory of numbers, and yet he had never heard of a doubly periodic function or of Cauchy's theorem and had indeed but the vaguest idea of what a function of complex variable was. In short, Ramanujan was able to surpass even the greatest of mathematicians while lacking knowledge of the basic tools they employed. How did he do that? Ramanujan's work has become relevant to the ever new studies which didn't exist when he was alive in areas like computer science, electrical engineering and the study of black holes. Interestingly, like many Indian mathematicians, Ramanujan would usually jot down the conclusions without elaborating the steps to reach there. Fellow mathematician Freeman Dyson of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton proclaimed, Ramanujan had some sort of a magic trick that we probably don't understand perhaps. While Dyson called Ramanujan's approach a magic trick, G. H. Hardy called it some kind of a deep intuition. Ramanujan and his family were orthodox Iyengars from Tamil Nadu. Their Kuldevi or the deity in their temple was goddess Namagiri Thayer, worshipped at the temple of Namakkal. Prior to the arrival of Ramanujan, Komala Tamil had been childless. The family prayed to Namagiri in the hope that she would bless Komala Tamil with children. Ramanujan was born shortly thereafter on 22nd December 1887. He was good at mathematics from his childhood. He had a habit of writing down his dreams on a slate that he kept beside his bed. As he grew his relationship with his subconscious grew deeper. At the age of 13, he had mastered advanced trigonometry without a teacher, alone from a book that he had loaned from someone and began creating his own theorems at an age of 16. Ramanujan, after becoming famous, had openly stated that he received the mathematical inspirations and sometimes the whole formulas through the Hindu goddess Namagiri while dreaming. Ramanujan was an observant Hindu, adept at dream interpretation and astrology. Growing up, he learned to worship Namagiri, the Hindu goddess of creativity. Namagiri is another name for Lakshmi Devi and is the wife or Narsimha of Vishnu Avatar. Ramanujan considered mathematics and spirituality as one. He felt, for example, that zero represented absolute reality and that infinity represented many manifestation of the reality. An equation for me has no meaning unless it expresses a thought of God, he had said. Ramanujan came from a poor background and had struggled to meet ends meet. In the year 1930, he had written a few letters to the mathematicians of his time in Europe about his formula. 
His letters, which contained his mathematical observations, shocked the scientists and the mathematicians in Europe. So remember, Ramanujan was working in a desert. He was addicted to mathematics. Nobody understood anything about his work. And he eventually reached out to English mathematicians. Some didn't respond, uh, but I'm so glad that G.H. Hardy did respond. I like reading the words, the first few words of the letter. Ramanujan wrote the words, I beg to introduce myself to you as a clerk. I've had no university education. I have not trodden through the conventional regular course, but I'm striking out a new path for myself, and the results I get are termed by local mathematicians as startling. The letter goes on and includes many pages of mathematical scrawl, some formulas well known, some not quite right. But the letter ends with three unbelievable formulas. Formulas about what's called the Rogers Ramanujan, what would later be called the Rogers Ramanujan continued fraction. And those results were so shocking to Hardy that Hardy knew that the author of this letter, who turned out to be the Indian clerk Ramanujan, had to be at some level a natural genius. Hardy would later write about this letter the following words, and in particular about the last three lines of Ramanujan's letter. These formulas defeated me completely. I'd never seen anything in the least like this before, and they could only be written down by a mathematician of the highest class. And they must be true, because no one would have the imagination to invent them. These are lovely words. So they attempted to take Ramanujan to England to join him at the University of Cambridge. Initially, he resisted. As to a Hindu Brahmin leaving the subcontinent was equal to ostracization. So he informed them that he would first have to seek the blessings of Goddess Namakari. This was amusing to the professors in Cambridge. Three months later, it is believed that Goddess appeared in Ramanujan's dream and he finally agreed to set sail to England. Ramanujan was strictly vegetarian and insisted on walking barefoot whenever he could. With his habits, he continued to amuse his fellow mathematician. Was Ramanujan special? It is not a unique story among high-level thinkers. The creator of the periodic table, Russian chemist Dmitry Medlev, had claimed that it came to him in a dream that all the elements, including some that were not even discovered yet, simply fell into the place before him. Albert Einstein was famous for his thought experiments in which he would sit in a quiet solitude, imagine the results of the theoretical concepts. It was during one of these thought experiments that he came up with a famous equation E equals to MC square. How did spirituality assist Ramanujan? Hinduism believes all matter is made of five elements, earth, water, fire, wind and space. Akash is often misinterpreted. Some believe prale, that is unconsciousness, is based on either Akash. There is an individual consciousness and then there is universal consciousness. There are just reflections of each other. It is just that an individual's mind may be too muddled by the daily course and cannot comprehend the vastness of universe mind. Albeit, one can train themselves to comprehend and access the vast knowledge of universal consciousness. In Ramanujan's case, him being a deeply religious man helped him in accessing the higher knowledge, or so we can conclude. Being a deeply religious man, he continued to be a vegetarian even after landing in Europe. It was a tough time for him to sustain there. He returned to India after a six year long stint in Europe in the year 1990, and he was terribly sick. But even after reaching, he didn't give up on his passion. In Madras, Neville found that Ramanujan was married to a 14-year-old girl called Janaki Amal. She is now 87 and lives in a poor area of Madras, surrounded by mementos of her husband. All I can tell you is that day and night he worked on sums. He didn't do anything else. He wasn't interested in anything else, just sums. He wouldn't stop work even to eat. We had to make rice balls for him 
and placed them in the palm of his hand. Isn't that extraordinary? His family told him not to go and at first he agreed not to. But then he said he was going to Namakal to ask the goddess Namagiri for guidance. She told him to go. Yes, and now I remember. I asked if I could go with him, but he told me I was too young. Before he left for London, he had his hair long and because he thought it would hurt our feelings, he sent us off to Kupagonam. Then he cut his hair and dressed in different clothes. You can see the photo of how he looked. I myself never saw him like that. I only saw the photo. He didn't like to have his photo taken. He used to say, if you had come with me, I wouldn't have fallen ill. It's because you didn't come that my health failed. He said he had left all his math books in England and would like to go back. He also said he had 5,000 rupees in savings to buy me diamond eardrops and a gold belt. He wouldn't talk to anyone who came to the house. It was always maths. Even then he didn't care about his meals but would only do sums. He sent them to England. Four days before he died, he was scribbling. He filled a box with papers and there were more papers scattered around the bed. The papers went here and there and changed hands. I don't know where they went. For him, in this universe, maths was everything. On his deathbed, he told me that his name would live for a hundred years. He said, whether I am alive or dead, you will have money. He knew he was dying and said there was nothing anyone could do about it. I always remember his name whenever I meditate. And continue to write letters to G.H. Hardy and informed him about Ramanujan's new findings. It was in his last letter he described several new functions that behaved differently from known theta functions or modular forms and yet closely mimicked them. This had puzzled the mathematicians back in 1920. Eighty years later, in the year 2002, Sanders and Weggers described that Ramanujan was explaining the black hole in the last letter. Black holes were not discovered, not until 1970s. Surprising, isn't it? Maybe not to the ancient Hindus, who were believed to have access to higher knowledge through their subconscious. Today's math is taught to us as a tool to assist in calculation, and hence it is beyond the comprehension of commoners to understand that the entire universe relies on the calculations to maintain its balance. Some complicated and some not so complicated calculations. Hope you've liked today's video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you like the content, please do drop your precious comments in the comments section.